making a film isn't all hanging out with pals and making big explosions, as much as directors would probably prefer it that way. Plenty of hard work goes into bringing weird and wonderful creations to life. The point remains that many films fall flat on their face before they can get started, and are relegated to the gloomy halls of development hell for their efforts. Sometimes, however, this incarceration has happened for a reason. It's only when the thing manages to rise up against the odds and actually get made that we all realise it wasn't actually worth half the effort in the first place. So with that in mind, I am Gareth, this is What Called and here are eight movies that escaped development hell and weren't worth the wait. Number eight, Alien vs Predator. Now this movie still retains a soft spot for many fans out there, but it is impossible to ignore the critical consensus that has seen it shunned by the majority of film watchers ever since its release. An amalgamation of two series that have long fascinated science fiction fans, Alien vs Predator was the fifth instalment in the Alien franchise, and came with its fair share of baggage before it hit screens. Originally drafted just after the 1989 comic released, Alien vs Predator was hotly debated by franchise veterans who wanted nothing to do with a goofy crossover movie. Sigourney Weaver, James Cameron and Ridley Scott distanced themselves from the idea. 20th Century Fox let the idea sit until 2002, after they'd seeded the franchise's crossing in a Predator 2 easter egg, you know the one, before actually getting it released for 2004. This was because solo movies kept getting in the way with no right time really decided upon until Paul W.S. Anderson slapped a proper idea down in front of the studio. Despite the hype and wait for excited fans, the film came out dark and disappointing, with the subsequent sequel only further reinforcing just how right Sigourney Weaver was to say that the whole idea really depressed her. You and everyone else, Sigourney. And while we're talking about the Alien franchise and with Alien Romulus about to drop depending on what time you're watching this video, I would like you right now to tell me your rankings when it comes to the Alien movies. You throw them in the comment section down below. Now back to the video. Number 7, John Carter. The John Carter movie is one of the biggest flops of this generation, which is surely punishment enough, right? Or so you'd think until you learn it was a distant passion project that has been banded around since the 1930s, before finally releasing in 2012. That is over 80 years of development that culminated in over $200 million of losses for production company Disney. Ouch. As for its time down below, John Carter is based on Edgar Rice Burroughs' novel A Princess of Mars. This was scoped by Looney Tunes director Robert Clampett in 1931 to be turned into an animated feature, meaning it could have been America's first cartoon movie in place of Disney's Snow White had everything come to fruition. In a rather prophetic sign, however. Test audiences didn't respond well and the idea was scrapped. Since then, it passed hands between 50s stop-motion concepts to 80s Star Wars rip-offs, before finally settling curiously with a director that had never been proven in live-action fair, Andrew Stanton. Now, John Carter isn't a bad movie at all, but it is one born from the genre-defining work of a writer that has since been ripped off mercilessly in every science fiction work since, meaning critics found it derivative despite being eight decades in the making. Number 6. Death Note Considering the fan love for this manga has been fueling the desire for a movie since 2007, you'd think the filmmakers would have used all the 10 years it took to release to refine exactly the right tone for it, one that reflects the vast source material and die-hard following in appropriate fashion. What audiences got instead was not received well in the slightest, however, with the studio's lack of confidence in marketing Death Note's bizarre themes resulting in a script that contradicted the source material's message. Passed around from Vertigo Entertainment to Warner Brothers, and from Shane Black to Adam Wingard, with plenty of other names in between, Hollywood attempted to turn the Japanese story into one that appealed to Western audiences in all the wrong ways. Initially, the idea was floated to remove Ryuk, the death demon and one of the linchpins of the series' success entirely, as well as making central character Light one intent on vengeance rather than justice. In the end, the long wait and confused hot potato toss surrounding the movie ended up not serving it well in the slightest. It was picked up by Netflix after confused distributors didn't know what to do with it, and negatively reviewed into film oblivion before fading back into obscurity afterwards. Bronze star for effort. Number 5. Ugly Dolls 
Is a movie made as a cash grab on a load of terrible dolls as an attempt to market them ever gonna be good? I don't know, why don't you try asking the Emoji Movie or Trolls? Or any other inane, memeably bad film with a merchandise line prepped before the movie even hits cinemas? Okay, I'm gonna give the Lego Movie a bit of a pass but the rest can hang their animated heads in shame. Ugly Dolls is, of course, a vapid exploration of a bunch of the titular dolls celebrating their differences from cookie-cutter conventional beauty, which would be an admirable enough message if it wasn't underpinned by greed. In any case, that the film had to fight to exist at all just feels a bit ironic, really, since it was dropped by the superior Illumination Entertainment studio and director Robert Rodriguez, and picked up by STX for a lackluster release in 2019. The film was originally announced in 2011, but didn't start moving until four years later. It then suffered from multiple changes up of crew and production issues before finally landing in 2019, eight years after its intention. And that no one has really heard of it nor cares for it just solidifies the Hollywood cynicism surrounding it. Thank you very much for checking out this list today, my friend. Now hit that subscribe button down below for more of this sort of what culture fun in your day. Now back to the video. Number 4, Ghostbusters 2016. The 2016 attempt at Ghostbusters had the potential to reboot a beloved franchise, bring something new to the supernatural table, and sigh a breath of fresh air in a fun new spin on the 80s classic. However, it jumbled up all of its intentions into one big underdeveloped mess that landed particularly sorely with audiences and critics alike. Instead of the breath of fresh air, we got a cloud of fart gas instead. But Ghostbusters wasn't always intended to be this way. In fact, it began life as Ghostbusters 3, a pipe dream constructed by Dan Aykroyd that sees the four paranormal investigators go to hell. Whilst this struggled to be pinned down from 1999 to 2009, the success the successful release of Ghostbusters the video game saw companies start sniffing around for film material with renewed enthusiasm, and Aykroyd's script was brought back and reshaped for a modern audience. This saw replacement busters and a new generation being brought to the fore, as Bill Murray had no interest in doing a sequel at the time. From 2009 until 2014, the idea was kicked around, remolded, and passed off between directors and producers, until finally settling on a gender-flipped reboot with bridesmaids Paul Feig. Whilst all the good intentions in the world were there with plenty of backing from most of the original stars, the film just didn't hit the heights it needed to to land on its feet and continue the franchise. However, 2021's Afterlife would finally find a way to keep the franchise alive in a more satisfying way, acting as a legacy sequel to Ghostbusters 2. Number 3. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Kingdom of the Crystal Skull released almost 20 years after The Last Crusade, though it began life as a script shortly after the end of the original trilogy of movies. Development hell for Indiana Jones was largely due to everyone involved not being happy with a story they could tell in a compelling way, resulting in the property switching all sorts of hands before they landed on the extraterrestrial madness that we eventually got in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And that was after titles like Destroyer of Worlds, The Mysterians, Son of Indiana Jones, and Saucer Men from Mars all did the rounds in the pitching phases. From the difficulty of balancing the 50s science fiction tone with the archaeologist shenanigans that Indy is known for, we got a patchy production that relied on action sequences peppered throughout an ill-conceived plot. Some parts of the audience were less than impressed with features like Indiana's son and his ability to survive nuclear explosions inside refrigerators. And though it's probably not quite as bad as angry fans shouted about at the time, it still really isn't the cinematic joy that the first three films reliably shot out many moons ago. And if one underwhelming entry that escaped development hell in this franchise wasn't enough, 2023's Dial of Destiny would eventually come along after many years in that same frustrating space, before finally flopping at the box office and being a bit of a disappointing last ride for the legend. Number 2. Supernova 2000 Supernova is not a film that has been relegated to lasting memory, one that many people haven't actually heard of in the grand scheme of science fiction movies, despite having a whopping 12 years in production and a $60 million budget. 
The story was originally developed under the name Dead Star and came to light in the late 1980s. And it absolutely reeks of Event Horizon, to the point where you'd rightly expect Sam Neill to appear with his eyes sewn shut floating about outer space in the background. And just like Event Horizon, the original version for the movie got lost along the way, resulting in something messy and jilted that only runs to 87 minutes total. Whilst plenty more footage was recorded, half of it doesn't make sense sense as script changes midway through production rendered the project all over the place and contradictory to watch. Some parts horror hellscape, some parts black comedy, some parts zero-g sex scenes. It's a big old pastiche of all the ideas presented to it along its decade-long creation. Despite the end product being a bomb, throughout its creation, Supernova was linked to massive names like H.R. Geiger and Francis Ford Coppola. Looks like sticking a bow on a turd still makes it a turd. And number one, Food Fight. Food Fight is perhaps the most ridiculous movie to be saved from development hell and vomited up in front of audiences for a quick bit of cash. Repeatedly ending up on worst movie lists and reveling in its janky animation, the film was supposed to release theatrically in 2003. Instead, it was chucked quickly onto DVD and dropped in 2012, which says everything for its quality. Food Fight was largely the result of Mortal Kombat director Lawrence Kazanoff beginning production with a good chunk of his budget missing, which is about as bad an idea as it sounds. Assuming him and his production company Threshold Entertainment would get funding from pre-sales and loans, they began animating the movie with computer-generated images. And of course, things began to go really wrong. Surprisingly, it was actually the unfortunate luck of having the assets for the film stolen in an act dubbed industrial espionage that was the first nail in the coffin, which forced the company to start again in 2002. This time, they went for motion capture, with the animators landing somewhere between the original and the new style in a completely bizarre format that stylized the final film. From there, the company's debtors got fed up when Threshold repeatedly missed its deadlines, auctioning the rights off in 2011. It was bought, finalized, then released, and panned universally for being narratively, visually, and developmentally a mess, earning it far more notice than it ever would have got off its own back otherwise. Still, it does have Charlie Sheen saying, frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam on record, so, so not all has been lost.